Now, heat pumps have become very popular. Uh, there's some pros, some cons that you should be aware of. So we put that on this uh, presentation so you get to know both. So let's get started. Guess the most important days for uh, heat pumps. Uh, 1850s, the disco era of the 1970s, the grunge era of the 1990s, or the last three years in era to be named. Well, if you guessed any one of the above, you would have been right. Heat pumps were exactly uh, manufactured or were invented in 1856 in Austria. 1970s, they became popular as OPEC uh, with the energy crisis. Heat pumps were a hedge against uh, escalating energy prices. In the 1990s, Electrolux manufactured the first, they took the first heat pump, put it into a dryer. We were the first to manufacture that. And from 2020 to 2023, we've seen more innovation in three years than in the past 170. You see Amila manufacturing 110 heat pumps. You have the ultra fast combination heat pump washer dryer. We're going to talk about that a lot in the end, as well as the LG wash tower. So really the way I want you to think of heat pumps is this is a car I used to drive in the 1990s. It's an Oldsmobile uh, Cutlass Supreme. I used to drive that. And so I don't want you to be intimidated by uh, heat pumps because it's really basic and it's been around for quite some time. Here's how heat pumps will work. Now, if you if you read it on the internet, you're gonna, you're gonna get confused. So think of it as two things. It's a condenser heating up the air and an evaporator taking out the water through a heat exchanger, okay? So the heat gets recirculated. So over time, that air becomes warmer and then becomes hotter. So it takes a lot less energy in, in um, for a heat pump dryer. Now let's compare and contrast that to a, an ordinary standard dryer. What a dryer does, it, it takes in cooler air, heats it up with, with old fashioned um, heating elements, and then emits it to the outside. So it's always doing that. So you compare and contrast the recirculating nature of a, of a heat pump versus something that's continually heating up cooler air. You'll, you'll know that that's why heat pumps are 50 to 60% more efficient, okay? So why is that important? Um, if we take a look at my electric bill, Massachusetts got some of the highest rates uh, at 34 cents per kilowatt hour. Uh, California's 19.9. My energy rate was 28.1 kilowatts per hour. I had an electric bill of $550 for like 300 kilowatt hours. So it ended up being, not 300, about 200. Ended up being 28.1 cents after distribution, okay? So we take a look at Whirlpool has said that the that the average dryer uses 1.8 to 5 kilowatts per hour. Now, if you're watching this with an older dryer, you're four to five, no question. But Lisa, I wanted to make the numbers round at 3.4. So if you take the average kilowatt hour, 3.4, and you multiply that by how much it costs, it's almost a dollar loaded, 0.96 cents, right? Now I wash one load a day between my daughter and myself. So it's about $350 a year. Now heat pumps are gonna be at least 50% more efficient. That's $175 a year just with two people. Now if you're a family of four or five doing multiple loads a day on an older dryer, the, the savings can be considerable. So with that, let's talk about the pros. We've talked about lower energy costs. Um, it's also generally because it's a lower, it, a heat pumps dry at a lower temperature. So they're not as, they're, they're not as hot, hard on your clothes. They're also ventless, so you can put them anywhere. That and a lot of them that all, can operate on a 110 volt, you're looking at, you're looking at it. anything can be a laundry room. You don't need to vent to the outside. Also, you don't need to clean a vent, but you don't, you don't need to vent to the outside. All you need is a drain and a 110 circuit and you have laundry because a wash only takes 110 as well. Now, the cons, a lot of people say, well, the drying time is more, and that to a certain degree is. Um, right here, we have the stats. We did a G washer dryer, uh, the LG wash tower, and the ultra fast combination washer dryer we'll get into. But let's compare versus the um, the G washer dryer against the wash tower. Really, it's, it's, it's about six or seven minutes uh, for whites in um, mixed colors. That's the only difference. For sheets and blankets, the, the wash towers, it turns out, it's sensor driven. So nobody can get sheets and comforts totally dry. And the way the LG operates, it's bone dry. 
at four hours and 25 minutes. Now, if it's mostly dry, you're looking at probably two and a half hours, like the uh, like the GE washer dry, it's gonna be a little bit more, but not four hours, unless you want it bone dry. Reliability, now I look at these stats and the average dryer is very reliable, 3.5% service um, within the first year. That's uh, the average appliance is 9.5, so it's considerably more reliable. I looked at the meal and I'm like, there's no way a meal of machine could ever be 11.9%. They just make too good a product. So I went into the uh, service calls and two thirds of our service calls were error codes based on people not taking out the lint from the, dry, from the uh, dryer. So if you were to take the two thirds out, meal is about 4%. So heat pumps to this point, have been reliable, as reliable as a regular uh, dryer. However, the problem that you, the problem that we're looking at is there's a lot more to it. So it's a lot more complicated repair. A, a dryer repair is very easy. You just take the elements in and out, but now you're talking about refrigerant, you're talking about condensers, heat exchangers, evaporators, so there's a lot more. Um, I don't think you have a problem with repair, However, you're gonna have a problem finding someone to repair. That's really the con to a heat pump dryer. Some of the, now everyone makes it, LG has a heat pump. Uh, we'll talk about their wash tower in a second. Um, most of what you're, uh, Samsung has a compact, LG's got a compact, Electrox obviously has a compact as well. Some of the ones you consider is the first company to manufacture or to import a heat pump dryer to the United States was actually Beko through their Blomberg, through their Blomberg brand. They're actually the most sustainable. They take their outer drums or actually re reclaim plastic from the oceans. So every year they take millions of pounds of plastic out of the, uh, out of the ocean. Bosch has certainly been the most reliable. Their washer is only 2.5% repair. Dryer is 3.3. They're the most reliable, but the most technologically savvy is the uh or forward is meal they'll have the the multi-load dispensers they've got fragrance dispensers 1600 rpms um honeycomb drums uh, for more gentle washing they're the best now one of the reasons why i don't get fixated in the lower temperatures of heat pumps is um these all have high rpm spin speeds Beko and Bosch are 1,400. Now the average spin speed on a washer is about 6,800 on a top load. These are gonna spin twice as fast, so they're gonna be mostly dry when they come out of the washer. Miele is 1,600 um, RPMs. So you're, these these clothes, you're not you're not drying, soaking top load uh, top load walk from a top load washer. Now here's an interesting F fact: Bosch versus Miele. Bosch is a 220 volt. Meal is a 110 volt, which do you think dries faster? If you guess Bosch, you'd be guessing wrong. They're about the same because Miele employs mineral sensors. So it automatically adjusts the drying time based on the water. So in, a, in effect, it's the same drying time when we tested both. Now, the LG wash dryer was the seven, most of the, most of the heat pump dryers to this, up until 2020, up until 2021, were four cubic feet. Wash tower, the LG wash tower 7.2. This is a very popular machine to put the controls in the middle when you stack. So it's easy, it's, it's a very, um, it's a why it's a very sensor oriented machine. This is the first of the, of the big heat pump dryers. And then of course you have the ultra fast. Ultra fast is a combination washer and dryer, something that I, totally not recommend you buying because they can't move the lint. And over time, what happens is the lint will just seize up the machine for an almost impossible, expensive service call. However, if you take a look at where G put their filter, they put that big double side filter right by the heat exchanger. So it removes most of the lint. Um, you still have to remove some of the lint yourself, but um, a much better design. So if we take a look at the future of heat pumps with the return on investment, the ROI, if you're a family, it's huge. I think you're gonna see a lot more of um, the wash towers in the future. And you're gonna see a lot more combinations in the compact sizes as well. But there's no question 
that over time as the technology becomes even more refined, you're going to buy a heat pump certainly within five to 10 years. If you want to learn more about heat pumps and the larger ones, we did a video about the ultra fast versus the watchtower. You can access it by clicking this link.